Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Play Some Video Games, the only gaming podcast that sells more Nintendo Switches than Nintendo themselves. Now, before you turn this off real quick, I'm just going to warn you right now, this podcast is not about the Nintendo Switch, all right? Donnie got a little crazy. He took over for a couple weeks in my absence, and he's talked about nothing but Switch. So we're here tonight to give you a little reprieve from that. So it's I, your returning host, Kevin, as always. Uh, with me this week is Kyle. Kyle, how are we doing? Wait, we're not talking about Switch? Not Well, I mean, we'll talk a little bit. I have one question for each of you, but sure. But the whole podcast is not going to be about the Switch. Man, I got to do all my notes all over again. <laughs> <laughs> and with us this week as well is Justin. Sir, how are we doing tonight? Greetings, Koopalings! <laughs> Oh wait, that's that's not right, is it? Or is it? Okay, I think it's I think it's perfect. So we'll roll with that. Um, so yes, I was off for a couple weeks. I apologize, everybody. I did take a huge family trip to Disney World with twenty eight of us in total, which was insane. And you know, we spent tons and tons of money to go on these trips, so it made perfect sense for me to come down about halfway through with bronchitis and pneumonia, as well as the baby also got sick. So that made perfect sense. So I takes a little extra time off. So that's why we kind of let Donnie a little bit crazy. But you'll get a reprieve from Donnie. He will not be around for the next two weeks or so uh, because he's on some top secret government assignment, uh, actually at the Super Bowl. Uh, So he can watch his home team, the Atlanta Falcons, get demolished by the Patriots. So, you know, we'll see him when he comes back. But he'll have have stories to tell then, I'm sure. Um, So... As every week, we like to check in and catch you guys up with what we've been playing, what we've been doing, and more, most importantly, probably what we've been drinking this evening. So, Kyle, why don't you take it away first, sir? So, to start with, I am currently enjoying a bourbon barrel stout from Central Waters Brewing Company out of Amherst, Wisconsin. Uh, you know, the bourbon barrel kick has been big for me lately, so I thought I would give a different one that is not Dragon's Milk, the unofficial mm-hmm. official beer of PSVG, a try. And it's quite <laughs> delicious, so I highly recommend it. Not quite as good as Dragon's Milk, but it's still very, very good. Uh, in addition, since last time we uh, we chatted, I finished Batman the Telltale series. I know last time I was on, I had like an hour and a half left of it, and it was good. I, I am, will definitely play the next season. I I really, yeah, I don't know what Telltale is going to do. They need to do something as far as their engine and stuff goes, but their storytelling is still pretty dang good, so it's hard for me to say no to their games because story and characters are so important to me, and they do a great job of that in their games. So got a chance to bust that out. It was a good time, easy platinum. Uh, and I'll definitely play season two when that eventually comes. I also got to jump into and finish the critically acclaimed Inside. Um, I think we're going to be talking about another game from the same developer a little bit later with Kevin. Uh, <laughs> I think this game was a victim of its own hype. It was good. Yep, it was good. I, I don't <laughs> think it was as great as other people did. They're, they definitely have a level of polish and their ability to sell to- their ability to tell stories without words or or you know text or anything like that on the screen is pretty incredible um but and i think it's a really good game i just don't necessarily think it, it was the best game of last year so I, I enjoyed my time with it really glad i played it will continue to play the things um that play dead puts out i just don't think it's quite as good as most people um said it would be and maybe if i'd played it right away with no expectation i would have enjoyed it more but the expectations were just so high you know maybe it was possible that inside never would have gotten there uh, I also jumped into The Flame and the Flood, which finally has come out on PlayStation after being out on PC and Xbox for about a year now, I think. Uh, you know, it's a survival game similar to, you know, oh man, what's the one? Alone in the Woods or Night in the Woods, um, where you're out gathering resources. The cool thing about this one, though, is you are going around from campsite to campsite, uh, and then you jump onto your raft and, like, go down the river. And sometimes you're stopping at campsites, sometimes you're stopping at, like, old churches. Um, old fishing depots, like there's a lot of different places that you go and the different places that you go have different resources. Uh, so it's a really cool game. There is an endless mode in it, but the nice thing about it too is there is a actual destination you are trying to get to. So if you want to quote unquote beat this game um, and not just, you know, see how many nights I can survive, there is an end game to it if you want there to be. Uh, I've only played it a couple times or started over a couple times. I enjoy it. You also have a dog, so that's always a plus. Uh, so I'll definitely play this one more often, though. It, it's nice to jump in and just kind of have that, okay, what can I do this time? And it's nice to always feel like you're getting a little bit ahead and understanding better what you need to do each time you jump into it. Uh, every time I get back uh, against really tough animals, uh, boars and wolves, I have bit the dust. So hopefully I can, you know, develop my weapons a little earlier so I can have a chance against them. 
Uh, still playing Overwatch. They have their Year of the Rooster event going on right now, and it is quite enjoyable and fun. Really excellent skins this time. I think they, of overall, the quality of skins in this one is probably the best overall, um, but not the best ones are not maybe quite as good as some of the best ones they've ever had, but even their quote-unquote bad ones this time around are better than many of the other ones that they've done. So it's still Overwatch. They do have Capture the Flag, which changes up the game pretty significantly, actually. When you have a game that is supposed to be all of us go together as a team to this one point and fight, and now you have to not change the abilities of any of the people playing, but now you're splitting off into two groups, one's offense, one's defense. It really changes the game a lot. So it's, it's an interesting, different way to take it. Uh, the first couple days of it, there was a lot of draws because people didn't really necessarily know how to figure this you know, meta out yet or how to play this game with these characters. But so far, or now that you play it, it definitely isn't quite that way anymore. So I'm enjoying it. Um, I always enjoy these special little events that they do. Uh, in addition, started Gravity Rush 2. Um, enjoying my time with that. It's more Gravity Rush. I really like the characters. I really like that world. Uh, the controls, I think, for what, for what they're trying to do, I think the controls are about as good as they possibly could be. Uh, and I actually need to make an ap- apology to Coach Mo right now. <laughs> because a few weeks ago when we were podcasting, he and I kind of got into a discussion about whether pre-ordering games was a good idea or not. And I said that you should never pre-order. Well, I didn't pre-order Gravity Rush 2, but I still got it. However, I read a story today about how physical copies of Gravity Rush 2 now are extremely difficult to come by. So, maybe if you were buying niche games like Gravity Rush 2 or yeah. the other game that I just started, which is Yakuza 0... Um, and actually, my GameStop, I think, only got like less than five copies of it, um, and all wow. of them were pre-ordered. So, yeah, uh, I got one, because I actually had pre-ordered it the day I went in to get Gravity Rush 2, because I just asked. I'm like, well, how are you sitting? They're like, um, we have like two that aren't accounted for yet. I was like, well, I'll pre-order one of them. So, I apologize, Coach Mo. When you play niche games, sometimes it's good to pre-order. Uh, but yeah, Yakuza 0, I started, I'm only an hour in. Uh, it's pretty cool. I'm having a good time with it. It's kind of odd because you have these really serious story going on and then you have these really crazy weird side missions and other activities you can do like hey you can go sing karaoke while you're waiting to find if your yakuza boss is going to kill you and that seems really cool uh they also in the fighting tutorial um you literally beat the drunk out of some people where they're literally (laughs) drunk and like kind of fighting with you and starting stuff and then you beat them up so bad they're sober afterwards so that was a real thing (laughs) <laughs> i know right so yeah so uh like i said only about an hour into that but i feel like i'm going to enjoy it so i've talked far too long but that's all the stuff i have been playing awesome justin what are you well first off what are you drinking and then what have you been playing buddy well i'm uh starting uh yes i did say starting uh with a uh space rock uh pale ale and then i also have some uh carhartt woodsman uh pale ales oak aged uh from new holland brewing so Mm. um i have been playing well i don't check in a whole lot with uh, the psvg listeners so i've got quite a list but i've narrowed it down uh it's some of the best games i've played in the last couple months uh titanfall 2 i beat uh, i played through the campaign uh really enjoyed that great shooter um i played Batman, the Telltale series or story, uh, I had a lot of problems with Batman. Um, <laughs> technical issues, unfortunately. I had the game crash for me three nights in a row, uh, and all three nights I was like, all right, I'm done. Um, but <laughs> I did want to finish up the story because the story was really good and very interesting. Uh, I'm not a big Batman like comic book reader, but um, even as like a, you know, knowing the movies and stuff you can tell they flip the script on some of the characters which i thought was very interesting um i've been playing i played a lot of jackbox uh party pack one and three uh we had a big we had a new year's eve party with a couple uh couples come over and we played that for like six hours so wow uh, that was a lot of fun um uh so still playing that i play i break that out every once in a while uh, did pick up Overcooked and played that with my wife, who has not played a game in like probably five years, um, and uh, she's actually enjoyed that quite a bit playing with me. She she hasn't touched my PS4 since I got it. Um, the only game she played on my 360 was Tetris. So um, <laughs> I was 
pretty excited to get her into playing Overcooked with me. Uh, and then, final but not least, uh, the game I've put the most time into in the last several months is Final Fantasy XV. Oh, nice. I'm still grinding through. Um, I actually just, I think I'm 37 hours in. Um, the story's getting... I'm a big Final Fantasy fan, but <laughs> this this story is just a pile of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I played for a couple hours last night, um, and... I all of a sudden it just it, it all clicked at once where I was like I don't know what is going on. There's cool visuals on the screen and there's cool cutscenes, but like the what they're saying doesn't make any sense. Uh, just it, really poorly planned out story, um, which I think is unfortunate because I've uh, I mean seven, eight, and nine are my favorite one of my favorite games of all time. All three of them. Uh, I, I've been playing Final Fantasy VI as well and. The stories are really nailed down in those games, and this game has everything else but the story. I feel like so, but I'm still gonna be playing through it. Yeah, there you go. Nothing wrong with that. I do want to get into that one eventually when I actually have time to play games. It's been quite a bit of time. So uh, my turn then. I am drinking a uh, Lining Kugel Cranberry Ginger Shandy. It's all right. <laughs> I picked up. Uh, I hit up the liquor store. Uh, I think it was right after Christmas, and decided I was like, "Hey, I'm gonna pick up six different, uh, do a mix of six of all different random holiday brews," and that just happened to be one of the ones I had left. But it's not terrible. I've had worse, so eh, it does its job. Uh, gaming wise, so yes, I am playing Limbo, as Kyle alluded to earlier at the recommendation of Seth, even though he denies recommending I play this game. Um, I think I'm almost done with that. I just have to go back and probably one more session. I'll have it done. Uh, interesting game. I'll give it that. Um, I like the visual style of it. It's just very odd and like you die a lot and they don't really yes. guide you at all. It's kind of like you would never know that, Hey, if I just walk here, I'm going to die because everything's <laughs> just black and white. Like that's all you have. So there's a lot of interpretation in it. Um, I don't know if there's ever going to be a point to the story or if there really is a story, maybe at the end I'll find out something. I don't know. Um, not terrible. I think I only paid like less than a dollar for it. So I really can't complain. It was like $2 something like that. So totally worth it. It's fun. Um, the next thing I've been taking some time in, uh, if you follow on the website, I do, I did start a weekly, uh, when wed NES day, uh, <laughs> segment where I'll be reviewing a classic NES game every week. Um, last week I did uh, balloon fight. Next one up is bubble bobble, which is one of my all time favorite NES games. Uh, the music just gets stuck in your head and you can't get away. I've always loved it. So look for that review to be coming up and playing that. Other than that, I'm still enjoying my time with battleborn. Uh, I still think it's a travesty that so many people did not play this game uh, simply because it kind of dropped the same time as Overwatch and Overwatch, as great as it is, kind of stole the show. Uh, I do really enjoy Battleborn. They they still, rele still releasing new characters, which I find amazing. They dropped a new one last week or the week before when I was on vacation. So I'm um, still having fun with that, playing with Josh, uh, and hopefully I can dive in with Seth and we can all play together at some point. Um, and then lastly, uh, I'll mention this one. I haven't started it yet, but I will be reviewing it on the website. So look for it. it is It is Earthlock Festival of Magic. It looks to be a uh, Legend of Zelda-esque type game. Um, supposedly like a dungeon crawler kind of thing. So look for that. I'll stream some of that and have the review up maybe in a week or so. Um, but yeah, that's it for me in gaming. Um, hoping to get more into stuff. I did pre-order today, actually, uh, Yoshi's Woolly World for the 3DS. I did play it on the Wii U. Uh, but the demo on the 3DS did kind of sell me to buy it again. So I'm going to tr translate it and have it on the 3DS, play it on the go. Um, so that's it for the weekly check-in. But before we move on to the main sections of the show, if you will, let's get the little bit of Switch talk out of the way here. So the three of us have not been on a podcast to talk about what we think of it. Uh, did we pre-order it? What are we going to do? What's the plan here? So we'll take just a couple minutes real quick. Each of us will kind of go through and give our thoughts. Um, since I know kind of where Justin stands. Let's throw it to Kyle first. Uh, what did you think of the official unveiling? Did it do anything for you? Did it convince you to maybe be interested in it down the line? Uh, well, I thought the, I mean, the unveiling, the the show itself, I was live blogging it here on the PSVG website, and the show was not very good. Uh, in fact, I, I don't want to say it was bad, but it was not very good. But it was, it was very Japanese. As someone who's seen a lot of, and granted it's different, but seen a lot of Tokyo Tokyo Game Show press conferences. Yeah. Like I, you can kind of see it there. I mean, even though 
you know, typically I've watched the Sony ones. They're still definitely a little more uh, energetic and enthusiastic, like with the yeah. trailers and things yeah. that they show. But the people standing up there talking, that is extremely how that goes. It's very dry, very, you know, trying to, very businesslike. Um, so I kind of expected it to be that way. I was expecting, like, I, I the whole discussion of is one, two, switch any good or all that stuff, whatever. They're trying to do some different things, and that's cool. I'm just surprised at the games they chose to show. Like, the fact that they didn't really show, hey, Mario Kart's coming, like, a month later, and they didn't even talk about it. Like, that's the kind of stuff that really surprised me. Uh, I think it's the Switch is cool. I think it's a, a really cool piece of tech. Um, I am interested in one, but definitely not right away. Um, with the date that it's releasing, I know most of the folks, you know, at PSVG are really stoked about Zelda. I am really stoked about the game coming out a few days before, which is Horizon. So I'm going to be playing yeah. that. And then Mass Effect is coming out, you know, and then Near Automata is coming out, which I'm really excited for, as well as Neo in earlier February. Like, I have plenty to play. If I was in a situation where I was itching for something, I might have dropped the money. And I had I had a Switch in my cart ready to pre-order and I decided oh. not to do it. Um, so, you know, holiday season rolls around. You know, it's something I could definitely see me potentially looking at picking up. Because uh, I think it would be a good compliment to someone who grew up playing Nintendo. It would be nice to kind of get back to that. I don't play my 3DS that often. But, you know, I think it's cool. I'm really excited for the people who are excited for it. I think it definitely has a lot of promise. I just hope that that third-party support comes through that, like they're saying it's going to. Agreed. So, Justin, what do you think? Uh, well... Uh, I did pre-order, so I'll just get that out of the way. Um, I, I, mean, I grew up with Nintendo consoles, just like everyone. I'm, I, everyone on the PSVG team. I mean, we all, everyone grows up with a Nintendo, unless you know you're a youngin. And uh, I have not had my own Nintendo console since a SNES. Honestly, I mean, I've played, I've played everything else, but I've never actually owned them. I, you know, I. I Never owned a GameCube. Uh, we had a Wii in our house, but it was like my little sister's, and I didn't play it, and I was off doing other stuff. And uh, I wanted to get a 3DS, and that I wanted to get one in the holidays. They're sold out everywhere. Um, <laughs> so, uh, as you may have heard in some news stories here and there, and uh, this was just my chance to get back in on Nintendo. Um, conference was bad, just like everyone else. Uh, I mean, we all in agreement on that. It was bad from a, a, I guess, from our standpoint as an American audience. Um, I'm sure the Japanese audience maybe thought differently, but yeah, the games were all right. Um, I've never played a Zelda game ever in my whole life. Oh, wow. So, okay. Uh, yeah, so um, I know Donnie's probably going to kick me off the um, team now. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I, uh, yeah, I pre-ordered Zelda, got the switch, um, and, um, which was hard it was actually, I woke up, you know, I, I, I get up at like five 30 every morning and I was scrambling on Best Buy's website and they kicked it. I had the black, the gray model in my cart and then they kicked me, it kicked me out of the cart and said it was sold out. Uh, and then I was able to pre-order one, uh, uh the colored edition, but now I have to drive like 45 minutes to go pick it up. So, <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what it's, what it's all about. Uh, and <clears throat> more and more, I find myself, uh, wanting to play games like on the couch, just like I do on my, with my Vita what, so that I can hang out with my wife, but you know, play video games, um, and kind of kill two birds in one stone. So that is my thoughts. There you go. So, as we all know, it was killing me partially inside being in Disney and not being able to watch the conference as it was going on and everybody was talking about it. So, I caught up later that night, but I hadn't seen any of the conference as it was going on. I kind of was just reading off the news I saw on Twitter and what you guys were kind of feeding to me. Um, I had gotten the same impressions off, you know, without seeing the conference that you guys did, that the conference just was bad. And I think largely due to the whole cultural split, they really should have done Nintendo Direct and kept it, you know... Japan gets this direct, America gets this direct, and keep it the way we're used to it and kind of like it. Like, I've always enjoyed the direct, so it seemed a little weird there. Um, I did end up pre ordering. Um, luckily, I was not able to do it when I was in Disney on my cell phone, so that didn't happen there. But luckily, Seth came through and snagged one for me as well. So I'm also getting the neon ones. Not my first choice, but hey, it's a fine. I don't really care. I can deal with the colored ones. I'd rather have the gray, but it's fine. Um, same as you though, Justin. I think the only thing I'm going to be playing at launch will be Zelda. 
Um, I may pick up I Am Setsuna, depending on the pricing. Um, that's not really a Switch title. Like, Zelda's the Switch title. Um, and then I, I will get Mario Kart 8, and I'm sure I'll dive into Splatoon 2 and some of the other titles later in the year. But um, overall, I'm excited. I do think they... I really wish they did a better presentation of it, and I think we'll get one. Um, historically, Nintendo's done one, I think, the last four years in February. So I would say most likely the same thing's going to happen again. We'll probably get some more Switch news. They'll get into some more details, maybe some more titles uh, for launch, because a lot of the indies are coming forward saying, no, 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 we're going to be here at launch, even though they didn't talk about it. So we might get some more uh, unveilings, if you will, prior to the launch. So we'll see there. But I'm on board. I'm getting one as well. So we'll be excited here. A lot of the staff is getting Switch. So uh, stay tuned, PSVG fans. We will have tons and tons of coverage for you um, day one, possibly even earlier. We'll see. Um but yeah, we've talked enough, so every single week we like to hear from you guys, the audience, so it's time to jump into the mailbag. Message for you, sir. So our first message comes from, uh, please forgive me if I pronounce the name wrong, uh, Jakea. Uh, is there a game coming this year that you think will change the gaming industry? Justin, let's throw it to you first. Uh... My first thoughts were to say not really. Uh, I think something to change the industry, like the Wii changed the industry for a little bit. Uh, VR is changing the industry a little bit. Um, I don't think in this day and age, like uh, developers aren't, they're kind of doing more of the same. You, you're seeing all the open world games. You're seeing more of the, more of the same. Uh, the two games that I have the most hope for, uh, first one would probably be Prey. Um, just some of the weird mechanics that are going on in that game or that they're talking about transforming into any object in the game. That's just different. Uh, I don't, I mean, it sounds interesting and if they pull it off the way we want it, I think it'll uh, be pretty interesting and a new mechanic that no one else has done, which is, I think the most change you can probably do. The only other game I have high hopes for, for changing things is maybe red dead. Um, I think Red Ted, we know what to expect. It's a sequel or prequel, whatever it is. Um, but, I mean, they're going to bring it. Rockstar is going to bring it. Uh, they, they're they constantly the best in the game. So I have high hopes for whatever they bring to the table with Red Dead. I think it's funny you brought up Prey because I had went back and forth in my head on that one a little bit too because I've been following that one. We all know I'm a Bethesda fan, so I think they drop them got my eyes on it at least um the mechanic like you said there too like i think right off the bat a lot of people are like hey this is a reinvention of dead space which is fine i do get that vibe from it i, I get that 100 percent. but like you said the the transforming mechanic if done right i think is kind of something that's different do i think it'll change the industry eh, i don't know i don't think personally that there's a game that's going to change it much like you had said justin but i think possibly depending how this continues to go for nintendo the switch may change the industry, meaning how Sony, how my, uh, Xbox, Microsoft will take a look at what they want to do next. So we look at a lot of times and people give flack for Nintendo for pushing the boundaries. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it you know crashes and burns in a huge dumpster fire. But they brought motion controls before anybody else did. You really want to get technical. They brought VR before anybody else did with the Virtual Boy. It was terrible, <laughs> but but they tried it. They were the first ones to bring you a handheld. And look at how many millions and millions of handhelds they've sold over the years. And now they're taking a home console and making it a handheld. So they continually do it. And, you know, Sony did their motion controls. Xbox came out to connect. And, you know, Sony now is doing VR. So, and the Vita obviously was, a you know, their attempt at doing it. And hopefully they come up with something new and push the boundary a little bit farther. But Nintendo kind of seems to be always the innovator here, whether it works or not the first time. That remains to be seen with a lot of the cases. But they do try it and continue to push others to attempt to do the same or try and do it better. So that's so, my pick there. All right, Kevin, are you, are you telling me I'm getting a Vita too? Is that what you're telling me? I, I, I personally don't think they'll do it, but I think they should. I, I, would I think, so. com I think comp competition is always good. It's always good to push somebody to continue to do it better. You wouldn't have a better, let's, let's put it this way. The, the new, th the new three DS, if you know, yes, it hasn't sold or not as a ton of people are as interested. In, well, with Pokemon, it did sell a ton, but without Sony releasing the Vita, why would Nintendo continue to push to make their handhelds better? And I think that always motivates it. Whether or not Sony wants to get into a handheld war, that's entirely up to them. But the fact they attempted with the PSP, the PSP Slim, the Vita, and they had another one, I forget what the other one was called. Kyle, do you remember the one that didn't take any disc? It was like virtual only? P 
PSP Go. PSP Go. PSP Go. Yes, thank you. So Sony made multiple attempts, and none of them really took off at anywhere near as they, much as they wanted to. But it continued to have them test their model and push their model farther and farther until it can go. They attempted to go all digital. That didn't fly. But heck, nowadays, if they came out with something that was all digital, that might do a lot better now than it would have five, six, seven years ago, whatever it was when that came out. So who knows? I would love to see it. I personally wouldn't buy into it. I think the Sony handheld, unless they did something much more uh, aggressive on their pricing, uh, to me that was way over the top. And while if you're able to pick up a Vita now and you you know paid attention to your, your uh, PlayStation Plus account and continue yeah. to download those games, you could get a huge library of awesome games for nothing other than the cost of the PSP Vita. So I think eventually someday I, might, I may even actually buy a Vita just to experience some of those games on a handheld if I can pick it up cheap enough. But if Sony came out with a new one and said, hey, here's our new handheld, it's 300 bucks, whatever the case is, I think yeah. I'll be fine with the Switch. So that's just me. But I like to see, see them continue to push and try and do something better. So, Kyle, what do you think? You got anything on your list? Um, first off, I have to say, when I way back in the intros and I said the game like oh, Night in the Woods or whatever, I was talking about Don't yeah. Starve. I don't know why I couldn't think of the name of that okay, game. Okay, I was trying to, I was trying to think about what you're talking about. I was, about. Thinking, I was, <laughs> All right. I was like, don't I don't know why. Don't Starve, I know. Like, I pictured the game and that's the na- words that came out, but I was thinking of Don't Starve. Anyway, um, you know, I think if there is a game that's going to change the industry that comes out this year, I don't think we know what that game is yet. So I think it is either going to have to be VR finally gets this killer app uh, VR adoption has been, it's still very, very niche. There's good experiences on it and there are good games on it. And I think Resident Evil 7 was the first real push forward that showed you could have a real true quote unquote triple A experience 100% VR. Uh, there are some pundits who say that is the definitive way to experience that game. Uh, I think it was something about 10% of players on PlayStation 4 who are playing Resident Evil 7 are playing it in VR, which isn't a huge... And they all crap their pants. (laughs) Probably, which isn't a huge number, but I think it shows that of those people who have VR, they are craving that experience based off of what we can anticipate that, you know, the current install numbers are for VR. So I think it, if, because for VR to get out of that niche market, I think it has to have a killer app and it has to have one soon. Uh, So I think... If that happens this year, that I think will definitely change the industry. Otherwise, I think it has to be a Switch game or that Nintendo does something different with Switch or Scorpio needs to do something that's Ooh. more than just the games looking pretty. And I think a contender for this might be Crackdown 3 because they talked a lot about the cloud computing and how they're going to use that to be able to do these things that they could never do just on the system itself when they're t- since they have to be able to play on Xbox One S and on you know Scorpio, whatever that is. So mm. I think... Something there might be something where we maybe don't notice a difference or we maybe don't see how the game is different, but industry insiders and how games are developed start to change because of something like that. Now, I'm not smart enough to know what all that stuff means or how it works, (laughs) but I think of things like Shadow of Mordor with that Nemesis system that was implemented on PS4 and Xbox One, but wasn't able to be run on the 360 and the PS3, so they say, so it wasn't in those editions. I think if we're truly going to see a change, it's got to be something like that. PlayStation, other than VR, their games, it seems like, are really focused on games. Like, I don't think we're going to see something... We might see really good games and really polished games and maybe some quirky, weird things, but I don't think we're going to get anything definitively different or unique or that we've never seen before. I think if that's going to happen, maybe it'll be a PlayStation VR game. Otherwise, it's going to have to come from Switch or using that Scorpio power in a way that we're not anticipating. Well answered. All right, so we'll jump on to the next question, which comes from Shy. Uh, they would like to know, why do you think Coach Mo doesn't write for PSVG more than he already does? And uh, I'll go first because I think I have the real answer here. And it's simply because, uh, Shy, it's really hard for Coach Mo to type when he has nacho cheese all over his fingers. It just makes a huge mess. He gets nothing done. I mean, dude has gone through like five keyboards this year. And keep in mind, it's only January. So uh, I don't know. Uh, Kyle, you have any ideas why Coach Mo doesn't write more? I think he starts to write, but then he gets sidetracked and he starts writing poetry for Michelle Branch. <laughs> because I know that happens to me a lot. I have a review that I was supposed to get done probably a month ago, and every time I sit down to write it, it's just poetry that flows. I can't help it. Well said. Justin, <laughs> any, any thoughts why Coach Mo doesn't do enough on the site? I think uh, Coach Mo might be spending too much time um, serving... Um, <laughs> I was just going to say something the wrong way. Uh, I think he <laughs> spends too much time selling games to himself. Because uh, I don't know if everyone knows, dude's been playing a lot of games and getting a lot of games. Or, my second yeah, thought, yeah. possibly he spends all his time plotting to take over PSVG. That so. works too, yeah. I mean, Co- Coach Mo's picture he shared with us uh, internally 
uh, this week of his Hall of Games just from this week alone. I mean, like, I don't even know. It was like 20 games. Like, it was insane. So, <laughs> yeah, Co- Coach was busy playing. He doesn't really want to write, but. So thank you for that question. And our last question this week is uh, what makes you guys do all of this, meaning PSVG, the podcast, the website, you know, talking to you all out there. So uh, we'll let's go to Justin first. Justin, why do you do all of this? Well, you know, props to you and Kyle. Uh, I do probably the least amount of work on the team. Um, I, <laughs> no. I, I do try to help out as much as I can, but uh, I definitely do it just because I love video games and I want to be involved in something. Um and getting to know the whole team and talk with you guys every day has been awesome. Um, even when I can't keep up with, uh, you know, Donnie's <laughs> ramblings about Nintendo every single day. Um, I mean, I'm not kidding. I, I log into my phone every day. Well, maybe not every day, but I always have like 200, 300 messages. And yeah. uh, <clears throat> most of them are Donnie talking about Nintendo. So, um <laughs> But yeah, I I love video games. It's I wanted it to be a little bit more than it than just playing. I wanted to help out a, a, a group, and uh, you know I <clears throat> I think we're all a group of really great guys that are doing the, you know trying to help each other out. I agree with you. I mean, we as you were listening, we talk a lot during the day. Justin is not kidding. We have our own little private chat server and even though we do our best to have separate rooms so if you don't want to pay attention what's happening with microsoft or what nintendo you can not be in that room kind of deal and i mean yeah i think you're being conservative there saying 200 messages a day there was one day when i was in disney i think i reported back i had over a thousand missed messages from you guys that day so yeah we talk a lot um uh, why do we do all this? So yeah, it's it's a lot. What Justin said. I've loved video games my whole life, and I've I've told that story a million times. Uh, you know, back in the earlier days of the internet, this is actually let me see when the GameCube launched. Um, I had worked on a video game website then, and this was long before there was podcasting or videos. You know, YouTube wasn't a thing back then, um, and I was just a, a, an editorial journalist. I, I had written a um, Super Smash Brothers Melee. Yeah, that was one that came out on GameCube. I had written a um, a guide basically for everyone how to unlock all the secret characters how to do all the special moves or anything like that so i had done stuff like that and that site grew up to be huge um their first e3 i wasn't able to go uh because i was having oh i wasn't i wasn't having my wife was having our firstborn so i would have been leaving her with like a two-month-old baby and our first child so i stayed back in the camp and kind of made sure all the sites got all, all the news articles were posted up any media they sent to me got posted up on the website so i'd done stuff like that and then i kind of dropped off from that because i wasn't really enjoying it um, and then, you know, Married to the Games happened, as we've all kind of talked about there, and met Donnie and Jason through that. And then Donnie had the crazy idea to do this thing, and I said, I'm on board. And, you know, as we had our first quote-unquote staff meeting, we, uh, you know, drew straws for who's going to be stuck being host. And everyone kind of just looked at me and said, you're doing it, even though we knew each other for like a week. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's been a great experience. I love sharing the, the stuff we find out. And this experience here has gotten us a lot more insight into – the gaming industry as a whole, the development, uh, getting able to to play games ahead of time, to review games, which gives you an entirely different uh, appreciation for video games, I think, when you have to do something like this. If you're reviewing something, playing something that you would never have picked up otherwise, it can really open your eyes to certain things you wouldn't pay any attention to. There are gamers that are perfectly content and happy with their Maddens and their Call of Duties every year, and that's fine. Um before this, I played pretty much only AAA, AA games. Never really was an indie guy, and now I'm loving indies because of this. And I never would have played pretty much any of them until this happened. So, uh, did it for myself then in those regards that gave me a better appreciation for gaming, and I just like sharing that passion with everybody else. That's why I do it. Uh, Kyle, sir, you're last. Yeah, I think I was just looking for a group of people to have, <laughs> I'll say, intelligent conversation about video games because you know, genuinely, honestly, in the world, there's. Probably and you're more. still looking for them. I'm still still trying to find them. <laughs> you know, there's genuinely some, you know, there's probably more important things going on in the world. But, you know, when you have a, a hobby or, or something you're passionate about, it, it's nice to engage in intelligent, thoughtful. And that doesn't mean that we don't get uh, very passionate about what we're talking about. But especially like our chat is probably almost one of the favorite things that I do is just it's really cool to have <laughs> those discussions about perspectives and the things that we think about things. Because I tried to do that on message boards and in different places in the past and man it got really tiring and and just exhausting and um there's a lot of really really great people in games but some of the people who are the loudest are not really people i want to spend a lot of time with (laughs) uh so this gave a way to hopefully hang out with other people who it doesn't mean we have to agree um i think if you look at our opinions about certain things we definitely don't agree on things (laughs) um but we 
<laughs> <laughs> but I, I think that we have some really good discussions. And then having the opportunity to um, write and podcast and stuff was something, you know, that I kind of wish I was t- 20 years younger because I'm old 20 years younger than I am now. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I could be doing these st- this stuff then because now I have responsibilities. So, like, being like, oh, I would want to do this stuff for a living is, like, not really realistic. But... Uh, having it as a nice little thing on the side and, and a way to reach out and connect to new people and meet new people and meet new people to game with and talk about games is great. So I think it's just another cool way to hopefully give back to something that I've enjoyed my life for most of my life in a really positive way. Agreed. So there you go, everybody. Don't forget to send us your questions in each and every week. Uh, you can write to us, podcast at playsomevideogames.com, or you can tweet at us at PSVG. We appreciate it. You can give us your feedback, questions, whatever you want to do. Uh, we'll read it and talk about it on the next show. So now it's time to jump into the main event, boys and girls, and it's time to talk about the news. This week in Play Some Video Game News. Our first story, as we actually talked a little bit about a second ago, is uh, the Prey release date has been set for May 5th on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Bethesda made the announcement a few days ago via a new teaser trailer, which looks to explain and enhance some of the mysteries of the game. Near the start of the trailer, we hear a gravely voice questioning someone, what the bleep have you done, he growls. Shortly after, a different voice kind of screams, oh god, security, security, so kind of lays out the story for you, but along along with the release date, uh, they also revealed the Cosmonaut Shotgun Pack, which is made exclusively available when you pre-order the game, so it'll come with a few tools that'll qu- come, as they say, quite in handy when fighting the Typhon, Typho- Typhon, I guess that's what you call the bad guys? Typhons. I don't know, it's, Ty- I don't know. it's Ty- spelled Typhons. like Typhoon, but missing an extra O, so I don't know. <laughs> um... Three neuro mods, uh, which you can spend to acquire new abilities. Two med kits, a fabrication plan to create shotgun ammo because ammo, uh, as they're saying, is pretty uh, scarce. Um, and you also receive a family heirloom, the Margrave shotgun itself, as well as the cool little costume that comes with it. So, seems pretty cool. The new trailer once again got me excited, and I'm happy to see May fifth. Honestly, I think that was a little bit earlier than I was expecting. I was probably thinking it was going to be a late summer, maybe early fall release. Yep. So, Definitely. good news. So, I don't know. What do you guys think? Yeah, I know. I, uh, I mean, yeah, I brought it up because earlier because uh, I'm excited for it. Uh, truthfully, um, I'm a, I'm more of a audio listener. I listen to a lot of podcasts all day. I don't watch a lot of video, so I've not even watched the trailer for this. Uh, Pray, no. um, but <laughs> I've heard plenty of podcasts about it, um, and just from what people are talking about it and saying about it, uh, that's got me excited. Uh, a lot of comparisons to Bioshock is the main thing mm. I've heard, and that's. Bioshock is probably one of my favorite series of all time, and uh, that's got me plenty excited. So I'm not going to pre-order it, though. I'm not, I'm not a pre-order guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, luckily, I don't think this is going to be a game that's going to be super scarce, so you'll have to pre-order yeah, it so. <laughs> in order to get it. Uh, I think May seems to be a good month for Bethesda. I mean, they released Doom last year. They had Wolfenstein the year before. I think it was Wolfenstein the year before, but I know Wolfenstein, whenever it I came out, so. came out in yeah. May. I mean, so I think that seems like a good month for them, and I do think that this coming out in May was a bit surprising. I thought it'd be further away than that, but I, I could see Bethesda coming, you know, to E3 this summer and then figuring out, you know, do we get Evil Within 2 and, you know, the next Wolfenstein game, whatever Machine Games is working on, Wolfenstein, uh, whatever that leaked title was in their trailer last year, so... Uh, oh, yeah, Colossus or whatever it was, but anyway. Yeah, I think it was Colossus. Yeah, it was like hidden in the stuff. New Colossus yeah. or what? But anyway, so yeah, I mean, I, I that makes sense. I think based off their history, I'm interested in this game. Um, as I've t- t- talked to you guys about before in our chat, that we get a thousand messages. You know, I'm toying with this idea of only playing PlayStation exclusives this year. Uh, I'm a hundred percent committed to that because of a new other project that'll be happening this summer, but. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm excited for it. I find it. I still find it fascinating that they're calling this game Prey. Um, I know they own the IP. Yeah. This has nothing to do with the old Prey. I think most people no. are gonna. I think most people don't have never even played the old Prey. So no. I just I'm still confused as to why this is called Prey. But I think the game looks really cool, and I do think. Um, yeah, I mean, I have confidence that it's going to be a pretty solid game. So. Yeah, I agree. I mean, like like you said, it's you know they had good May releases. They've had good fall releases. I mean, honestly, they've been on a 
bit of a bender lately. Uh, which you go back five or six years ago, you would he- wouldn't hear from them for like every two three years they come out with a game. So they're on a bender. I'd, I'd, I'd love to see them at E3 unveil another Fallout. We'll see. I mean, New Vegas came out very shortly after Fallout 3 did. So for me, I'd love to see something else. But I think we're more likely to see the Wolfenstein or uh, New Evil Within type thing for the fall. But we shall see. Uh, next story up, uh, Kevin Smith. Speaking of podcasters, one of my personal favorites, uh, he's been announced to join the Call of Duty Infinite Warfare Zombies Collection. So uh, to go with the very quirky take they took on Zombies for this release, it kind of fits in. But uh, Smith will be part of the Rave in the Redwood Zombie DLC that becomes available as part of the Infinite Warfare Sabotage DLC pack. Uh, after escaping the terrifying zombies in Spaceland, our heroes are transported to an abandoned campground. Um, set in the 90s, so naturally Kevin Smith in the 90s, clerks, small rats, all stuff, works <laughs> works well. Um, they find themselves, uh, in, the four actors find themselves in brand new roles along with some fresh new threads. Uh, together they'll team up to take on endless hordes of raver zombies and the mysterious slasher who's on a prowl to add more trophies to his collection. With the help of some brutal new weapons and even director Kevin Smith, our heroes just might put an end to the madness in the Redwoods. So... I'm not a Call of Duty guy. Um, I do like the zombies. I've seen. I played them a few times. Um, I really wish they just release it as its own game, and I'd probably be more likely to play them. Um, I mean, Kevin Smith is kind of the, the the king of geekhood right now, so I think it's a good fit. It's kind of fun. He's been tied to different games here and there. This is his second appearance as an actual character. Uh, he was in Lego Batman Three as an unlockable character, if you didn't know. Um, so, but this is his first time. He's lending his voice and everything to it and his likeness. If if you watch the trailer. It's pretty accurate. It does look just like him. Not the 90s version of him, the more modern version of him, but I think it works well. It's kind of cool to see something like that happen. What do you guys think? Well, I think, oh man, you know, the Call of Duty this year, the campaign was, or last year, I guess at this point, the campaign was great. And that is all I played of it. I did not play any of the multiplayer. I did not play the zombies, even though back in the day, I loved zombies. I played a ton of it. It got, this is going to make me sound really... Like, I'm a bad video game player. It got really complicated. <laughs> like yeah. It got super complicated. Like, I really liked back in the days of World at War, which is still the most underrated Call of Duty game. I loved that game, and everyone tells me yeah. I'm crazy for it. But no. that Zombies mode was great. I could have played that thing all day. Um, but, yeah, so it's just cool. I know there's a lot of people who really like Zombies and play a ton of it. I still have some friends who that's, you know, pretty much the only reason they buy Call of Duty is for those modes. Uh, cool for Kevin Smith, I guess. Not something that's going to draw me back in. Um, yeah, nah. just a little too much. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I'm I'm in the same boat. I I Infinite Warfare was a great game last year. I love the campaign. I don't think I went into the zombies mode once. So <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I've played zombies. I, I I've got a younger brother who's who was really into that. Um, I think on Black Ops one, uh, two, uh, he was like playing a ton of that, but. I'm not a zombies guy anymore. Um, maybe because I don't have any friends. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but I mean, yeah, hey, that's cool. Um, I mean, usually, I mean, if anything, I think it's uh, usually they have like these weird like C list actors and stuff, or yeah. it, it maybe even be- better than that. It's cool to see like Kevin Smith, who we all know, um, right? You know, but maybe the you know a lot of people might not know who he is. So cool to see him get some recognition in a huge huge franchise absolutely i mean we all know i mean he's probably the second most famous person appearing in the zombies because we all know uh you know michael rooker my homeboy is probably the best one <laughs> but, I, you know. I was thinking uh wasn't uh buffy the vampire slayer wasn't she in one of them i think uh oh was she i think so i uh, maybe i'm making that up <laughs> I'm, yeah. I don't remember weird, that. You could be right. I don't remember that. But. It's just my weird fever dreams. Uh, you know, <laughs> you think just, Buffy's in everything? Yes. Well, yeah. honestly, she she would she would fit in this one because you go back to the '90s that's and you true. go back to horror icons, and you know, maybe that's the next announcement. You're you're leaking some new info here on PSVG. Um, so the the next story, then uh, put in here just for Kyle because if you listened a while back, he did in fact call this. Now, while it's not confirmed for the U.S. Uh, PlayStation 4 Horizon Zero Dawn bundle announced for Europe. Uh, P- European PlayStation vo- uh, blog has announced the release of PS4 bundle for one of Sony's hottest exclusives of the year, Horizon Zero Dawn. The package expected to launch in European countries alongside the games released on March 1st. Includes a slim version of the console with one terabyte of memory, Blu-ray copy of the game, of course, and then they throw in a three-month subscription to PlayStation Plus. 
Details on the price have not been revealed as of yet. They just simply tell you keep an eye on pricing and availability. So no word for the U.S. Uh, I do think, even though Kyle called us, I kind of figured this would be a no-brainer. Um, I don't know of any other titles this year Sony's coming out with that they've confirmed that they could really bundle with and say, hey, here's this bundle. Maybe they'll do a Call of Duty. They'd always do a Call of Duty, but who cares about those ones? Uh, this is a little bit different. So we'll see. I don't know. But Kyle, you called it, man. Yeah, you know, I think I think we were trying to debate whether or not there was going to be like what was going to be the first like new skinned um, console, and this one isn't. It's just a regular console. Uh, I think we'll have to probably wait till this fall, unless there's something surprise coming out this summer that we don't know about yet. But I think we'll have to wait this fall for yeah. the first like custom skinned or graphic console. I really think though this is telling that it is the slim model and not the pro. I was about to say that. I still find that weird myself. <laughs> yeah, but. with how much they've been pushing, especially Horizon on Pro, uh, it really surprises me. I think that I was talking about Japanese sales numbers the other day because I'm a nerd like that. The Pro is actually <laughs> selling okay. Like it's not doing horribly. Yeah. It's not doing, but no. it clearly, it's not setting the world on fire. And I, I think the price point I heard thrown around for this was three ninety nine. So that's the price point I've heard thrown around U.S. So whatever that would be, millions of dollars in Europe. But um, so yeah, so which at that is not a bad deal. Um, not, but it's like, well, if you made it four fifty for the pro, would that you know who knows? But that's the price I heard thrown around was three ninety nine. So any thoughts, Justin? Yeah, cool. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah. It's just another. Uh, I'm excited for Horizon, um, but uh, yeah, I guess it's it's definitely inter- the that's the most interesting part is that it's not a PS4 Pro by far yeah um, like they have a new console out any bundles you would assume would have the new console um so they're definitely not pushing that probably like they should really um yeah but speaking so. of horizon by the time you hear this podcast depending on what it hosts posts you probably can read the horizon previews that come out monday uh, that's true yeah most likely mm-hmm. we'll probably drop on the same day so by the time you're listening to it they've already been out that's right know. so check out those horizon <laughs> previews already, unless you don't already, want to be spoiled they've already got the bundle they've already got you know everything you know um <laughs> quick note though uh sarah michelle geller was in fact in call of duty uh no. along with michael rooker and Dan- oh it was the same one and danny trejo yeah that was the same oh one. that's right, danny that's trejo. right. okay that. yep yep yep, yep. I, I think danny might be the, the as of late, he's been pretty popular. I feel like uh, so. Yeah. He's he might be the most popular one, but yes, I did want to. I don't want you guys. I don't want everyone to think I'm crazy for making <laughs> this that up or that I have some weird, you know, fantasy about Buffy. But no, that's a real. That's thing. true. You're crazier for way different reasons other than <laughs> yes, that. Yes, so that's that very true. <laughs> um, so our next news story, we'll kind of squeeze this one in here. We'll kind of bang these out a little bit quicker here uh, for the sake of time. But uh, Mass Effect Andromeda dropped a new trailer. Uh, personally, I have not watched it. Uh, I will be buying the game. Probably not day one, but I'm not watching anything because I don't want... I literally don't want anything spoiled. I'm fine with it. You don't need to sell the game to me. I'm going to play it. So I haven't watched it, but I know a lot of people have seen it. So if you haven't seen it yet, check it out. Uh, I've heard good things about it, but I've stayed away from any details. So uh, Kyle, I know you didn't watch it, right? Nope, I did not watch it. No need to. There you yeah. go. Justin, your thoughts? Yeah, I'm not no, watching it. Yeah. I'll, I'll play it at some point. It's a great game, so there you go so we have no comment but go and watch it if you haven't already so uh next story we'll jump in this one here so we've talked a lot about this actually kind of the subject of the next two stories if you will a lot on psvg and that's the the lack of superhero games per se so marvel you think geez they've had so many hit movies in the last three four five years at this point but they really haven't released any games for those franchises i think there was a hulk game i think there was an iron man game i know there's a thor game that was terrible but it was all before they really got bigger with avengers and, and civil war and all stuff um it, they've really been hush other than the disney infinity stuff but marvel did announce a multi-year pact with game powerhouse square enix for a series of video game titles starting with a brand new avengers game uh, but not really much details. Uh, they said the Avengers game will be announced in 2018, announced and released rather in 2018, uh, which, as I pointed out in our chat, that does coincide with the next Avengers movies, the Infinity War. Uh, so I think it might have something to do with that per se, because they do say the assemblers, the Avengers have to reassemble, which alludes to the stuff. If you haven't seen Civil War yet, what happens there? And obviously they have to get together for Infinity War. So it might have something to do with that. Um, but for the Avengers game, Marvel's working with two Square Enix-owned studios, Crystal Dynamics, the longtime developer of the Tomb Raider series, uh, and Eidos Montreal, known for Deus Ex, uh, and is the series of first-person shooter game, uh, role-playing games. 
Um, so they do say it's a key part of their franchises going forward that Marvel will partner with them and release more stuff other than just the Avengers thing. That's the only thing they've teased so far. Um, and as I said, the, ha- the, the first teaser trailer, they really don't show anything, uh, does note that the world will always need heroes. Uh, we just need to reassemble. It is a female voice to note there. So some people think it might have something to do with Miss Marvel, who is set to possibly make her uh, appearance in the cinematic universe soon as well. Um, so it might tie into that as well. We don't really have a whole lot to go on, but I was excited to see is that finally Marvel is taking uh, the gaming stuff serious again because we really haven't anything good Marvel in a long time other than Disney Infinity, which really wasn't fully Marvel. Um, you know, the Ultimate Alliance games were a long time ago, and those were probably the best things. Uh, we do have Marvel versus Capcom, but if we want something different, we really haven't had that in years. So I'm personally excited. Uh, what are you guys? You guys excited for this as well? Yeah, definitely. I'm I'm definitely excited. I mean, uh, this and and the, that Spider Man game coming out. Um, who you know we don't know when that's oh, yeah. we don't no. know when that's coming out. But yeah, Marvel's definitely doing the right thing. You know, picking good studios to actually take their games to instead of getting a generic uh, movie tag along game. <laughs> Platinum games. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not not. I mean, yeah. I mean, ten years ago, you'd get just these horrendous games that were literally just. Uh, a redone version of a movie that just came out um yep. so yeah no i'm definitely excited uh and i just got done playing tomb raider on ps4 so uh the rise of tomb raider so i'm hey that studio is doing really good cool things so yeah. i'm very excited for this game yeah i'm really excited about it as well i think that you know with we know that telltale is doing guardians of the galaxy which is coming supposedly this summer i think and then yeah, we have the Spider-Man yeah. game, and then we have this. And, you know, it was rumored a while ago that Crystal Dynamics wasn't going to be doing the next Tomb Raider game. And that, oddly, I think Eidos Montreal is actually heading up the next Tomb Raider, it looks like, and then providing support for this game. So yeah. it'll be really interesting. I'm really interested, though, since they said it's going to be a series of games. Yeah. What else does that mean? Does that mean only their Western studios? Are their Eastern studios going to get involved in any way, shape, or form? Like, what else does that mean? And I think it is exciting to see Marvel really being very conscientious and thoughtful with those licenses and like everything that they have lined up though. We don't know anything about this game at all. It seems, yeah. it seems like they're at least making those good positive steps because you know, the, the DC Batman games are excellent and a lot of fun. People like playing them and there's yeah. been, some, they've been doing some good stuff. So I'm excited to see what happens, you know, and how this develops. I would be really, really interested though, if they, if they're going to let any of the Eastern studios work on this stuff and kind of, what we might see coming out of there rather than just, you know, Crystal Theater and, and Eidos and things like that. That's true. And speaking of DC, funny you should say, Kyle, a uh, new Injustice gameplay trailer revealed showing Robin, who's unveiled his character, uh, and Ed Boon also teases some more obscure characters to be announced in Injustice 2. Um, he said there'll be some somewhat obscure characters on the game's radar. The first Injustice game covered all the high points as it relates to well-known DC characters, which I thought was a little off because there were some on there that some people may not be familiar with. So, um, oh my God, I can't think of her name now. The Magician Girl. Wow. <laughs> Magician Girl. Take my, That's her name. Take my, geek car- take my geek card away right now. But there were some not super obscure, but ones that a lot of kids nowadays wouldn't have known on there. So I beg to differ a little bit with that. Uh, but they said this one, the sequel will dive deeper into some new ones you may not know as much about. Uh, he also teases a good chance NetherRealm will release third-party characters as DLC for Injustice 2 uh, because they were very popular with Mortal Kombat X. So NetherRealm, NetherRealm is doing it again. So they had released, you know, the Alien. Uh, who else was? Uh, Leatherface was in the last one, I think, too, for uh, Mortal Kombat X. So, I mean, there was a bunch of characters that weren't um, native to that game, but they did well and and fit. So I think they could do it. Scorpion, I thought fit well in the first Injustice. It worked out fine. So we'll see more stuff like that. Um, but overall, he says Injustice Two of the largest roster for another realm game ever, which is very interesting because there's been some huge Mortal Kombat games, uh, both in terms of on disc characters and DLC. He also made it clear that Injustice Two was taking steps to avoid allowing players uh, to pay to win. Uh, that the gear that you can use to upgrade your characters that they've hyped a, lot, a little bit will not be sold for money. So people cannot buy the special gear off they can only buy characters so um he did confirm that codes for injustice 2 beta are going out now i think pretty much everyone in the staff here signed up for them uh nobody's got one yet but they did confirm the first series went out um so the other the confirmed playable characters in justice 2 include harley quinn of course again uh deadshot superman supergirl aquaman atrocious 
what was a, a Red Lantern, if you're not familiar with those. Uh, Gorilla Grodd, Blue Beetle, and Wonder Woman uh, launches on May 16th, so that's coming pretty soon as well, so I'm excited for that. I'm a big fan of the first Justice. My kids actually loved playing it with me, my girls. Um, so they're all kind of excited for this one, see some of the characters. They know Gorilla Grodd and Blue Beetle and stuff like that, so they're, they're on board. Supergirl, that's one of their favorite shows right now. So they're overall excited. I am too. Really hoping I get a beta key to test out ahead of time, but I think no matter what, I'm buying this game, just a matter if it's a day one or kind of down the line for me. Yeah, I'll also be picking this up so that I can play the wonderful Aquaman. Because Aquaman's a hero. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, Aquaman was really good in the first Injustice. If you weren't a good fighting game person, Aquaman was a really solid character. Uh, he I, was, he was. <laughs> but but me meeting Jason Momoa uh, at Comic-Con a couple uh-huh. years ago, that left a really bad taste in my mouth for who I know as Aquaman. Oh, okay. So, okay. But I, I won't get, I'll save that for another podcast. But yeah, go ahead. Gotcha. <laughs> no, I'm excited for this game. I really enjoyed the first one. I'm not a person who... Um, when I read comics and graphic novels, I don't tend to read superhero ones. I tend to read, you know, other stuff, saga and things like that. But, um, yeah, I'm excited for these games. I I really enjoyed the first one. I enjoy fighting games, as I said before. It's the one genre of game I really wish I was good at that I am absolutely horrible at, but I still love playing. So I will definitely pick this up. For me, like, like you know, you said, Kevin, it's just going to depend as to whether this is a day one purchase or... Or is this a down-the-road purchase for me? So we'll have to wait and see. But either way, at some point, I'm excited to jump into Injustice 2. Yeah, I I didn't buy the first one day one either, but I did pick it up when I bought my PS4 and I got the Game of the Year edition, so I had all the DLC. I know they're going to do that again because yep. NetherRealm does it with every one of their games, so I yep. might hold off until that actually comes out, but I'm not sure how long that'll be, so we'll see. I, if I can hold off, I'll probably wait for the Game of the Year with all the DLC, but we'll, we'll see. Justin, yeah, you, you, this on your radar as well? Uh, I'm actually, I'm not a big fighting game guy, so uh, I did play the first Injustice for, I think it was actually on PS Plus for uh, a month. It was. Yeah. So it was. I did play it, and I was like, well, that's cool, but yeah, not fighting game guy, so, um, but still cool. Yeah, just like, yeah, comic books and games coming together in a good way, finally, like, yeah. in the last <laughs> couple of years, like, yeah, it's fun. I'm glad. All right, well, boys and girls, that wraps up our news for the week. So it's getting about that time for us to say goodbye for this evening. But before we do, uh, we want to let you know where you can connect with us and give us some time to plug whatever else we want to. So, uh, Kyle, why don't you go first? Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at PsychoCross, C-Y-C-O-C-R-O-S-S. That is also my name on PSN. So if you are looking for some a friendly person who I sometimes play with other people as well to play like Overwatch with, feel free to message me. Just let me know that... Hey, I listen to PSVG. I want to play some Overwatch or whatever. I will happily invite you in and let you join our groups. We're not super good, but we do have a lot of fun <laughs> while we play. We do things like we'll take all support characters and then like one damn DPS character and see how well we can do. And we actually beat another group of six doing that just recently. So wow. I was pretty stoked about that. Yeah, because we had like all healers and one guy playing Soldier 76. Um, so, but we won, so like, I'll take it. So we do stuff like that every once in a while, but you know, we also, if you want to play a little more seriously, we can do that too. But yeah, um, also I'll be writing a little more often, um, coming up here. I just moved recently and finally have a, uh, rhythm down. So you'll see a few more posts from me rather than just the weekly Tuesday PSM picks. All right. And Justin, where can people find you and anything they should check out? Uh, you can find me on Twitter, uh, jpicky86, uh, horrible twitter name i know uh, <laughs> uh and i don't have anything scheduled right now um been kind of helping in the background a little bit lately um but lots of new stuff on the website um especially if you're talking about switch so uh, <laughs> if you want anything other than switch uh you know i think uh, seth put out uh most anticipated games list which is probably you know similar to a lot of ours as well so uh you can check out the site and I definitely urge you guys to go there because um, we've got a lot of stuff going up in the next couple weeks, I think. so. Yeah, I agree. As, as Justin mentioned, he's doing a lot of stuff in the background, helping us get uh, some more content for us to review. So we're back in full swing with that, uh, aggressively trying to get more content to put out for you guys there. So check that out on the website. Um, playsomevideogames.com uh, you can always make sure, as I mentioned earlier, email us at podcast at playsomevideogames.com Twitter at PSVG like us on Facebook, find us on YouTube, youtube.com, play some video games. 
Uh, another thing I'd like to plug on there, there is a video on the front page of our website. Uh, Donnie recently sat down with Gabe Patil of Married to the Games and uh, uh, Stapleton from uh, Fortress of Nerditude. Uh, so you can check out that video. They had a roundtable discussion of basically trying to talk Gabe into getting a Switch. <laughs> uh, spoilers, he does. <laughs> um, but you can check out that video. Uh, you can also listen to the audio on our uh, recent podcast feed, the episode before this one, if you hadn't heard it already. Uh, it's definitely worth checking out. Uh, we're looking to expand our horizons and kind of team up with some other podcasts going forward. Uh, as you know, Sean Capri uh, was on our Switch Reveal cast. Um, so we're working on some other things. You'll see us pop around all over the interwebs, if you will. But, yeah, more reviews coming soon. We're working very hard on getting that stuff there. Uh, last thing I do want to plug, we did have a listener reach out to us. So this kind of only applies to people in uh, the New England area. I do know, you know, personally I'm from there. Josh is from Massachusetts. So we do have some fan base around here. Uh, Arcade Generation uh, reached out to us to plug a game night they're having at the Shelter Arcade Bar in Providence, uh, which is a new establishment that opened up, which was one of the barcades. Uh, it's the first one in Rhode Island that I know of. Uh, it's kind of a cool place, but it's on February 16th. Uh, there will be free play, or you can compete for prizes uh, featuring PS3s, uh, Xbox 360s, Wii's, SNES, pinball, arcade games, and much, much more. Uh, pizza and drinks will be available at the bar. There will be competitions for Super Smash Bros. Melee, Mario Kart, Mortal Kombat, Tony Hawk, Street Fighter, and much, much more. So you can check that out if you're interested. Once again, February 16th, uh, 7 p.m. till midnight at the Shelter Arcade Bar. If you look up Shelter Arcade Bar on Facebook, you can find the event page there as well. So check that out. Uh, you got a couple weeks to plan that out. But if you're in the New England area, definitely check it out. It'll be a blast for sure. Kevin, are you so, going to do a live stream from there? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Not to put you on the spot or anything, but he's he's gonna use he's gonna beam the whole thing. Microsoft. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, mm, yeah. No, uh, maybe I'll Facebook Live some of it if I go. Ooh, I'm not sure if I'm going yet, but uh, if possible, Josh and I will both try and attend. Um, Josh doesn't know this, so I'm gonna put him on the spot now. But, uh, <laughs> Josh, we'll see if we can be there and represent the uh, the PSVG crew there. And Josh has been complaining; he wants to link up and hang out for a bit. So maybe this will be a good opportunity. So I know a couple friends that have, that have gone to this place too, and they all say it's pretty cool. So it's worth checking out. Uh, but we shall see. But boys and girls, that brings us to the end of the podcast. So thank you for listening each and every week and tolerating our complete nonsense and all the switch talk you've heard recently. Um, there'll be more coming, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending how you look at it. Um, not going away. But for the next couple weeks, get a little bit of a reprieve while Donnie's away. Um, but yeah, make sure you continue to tell a friend. Give us a review on iTunes if possible. Uh, remember to check out our friends uh, at That's Entertaining Podcast with uh, Nathan. And of course, Flux to Pose with Jason Lacey and Lucas Rose. And if you haven't already, and I don't know why you haven't, check out Battle of the Beer on YouTube. That's Jason and Lucas's side project, if you will. Um, a lot of fun, and they're doing big things over there, so definitely <clears throat> worth checking out. But yeah. more importantly, boys and girls... Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, remember, never stop gaming. Official Podcast.